What's up, and welcome back to the Pesky Bowl Podcast. My name is Ari, and here with me is my friend Robert, and we're going to talk about baseball and the Sox today. How's it going, Bobby? It's going pretty well today. I am tired as all hell today, but we're going to get through this. This is our series finale. Now, what yeah. is the, like, eighth episode we're doing this? It's been a long time coming. We've been doing this for it a bit. Has. Two months now. At least, so, yeah. We are finally on our relief pitchers. We have gotten through the hard part of our MLB hiatus. And if you guys do like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. We appreciate it a lot more than you guys know. Without further ado, Ari, you got your Ari's takes for later in the episode? I do. I do have it. Okay. Actually, I, I thought of one, and then I was like, nah. And then I did this other one today, so... This right. will be a this will be a good one, definitely. And, and after that, we have. Um, well, you got anything to say before that? Before we start, I don't have anything else now. All right. Yeah. Let's just get right into it then. Fifteen. My number fifteen is someone who's kind of bounced around a lot, position wise. Um, he's played starter relief and now he's eventually a closer the royals ian kennedy um the thing that kind of yeah the thing that kind of like threw me for a loop was how many saves he had right so 63 and a third innings pitched so like pretty solid Mm -hmm. 3.41 era 30 saves like that's that's pretty good 30 saves 1.3 whip and 1.4 war so, yeah, war is a little low, definitely a little low. But the thing that kind of pushed it into my top 15 was the saves. I was like, 30 is a lot, especially for a team like the Royals. Um, yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I personally didn't put saves in just because we were doing relief and closers in the same mm-hmm. category. So, you know, you have those relief pitchers gotcha. who their job isn't to come and get saves. So, personally, I didn't put saves in here. I just did war, ERA, whip, strikeouts for nine innings, and strikeouts for walk. But you got some guys who are just killing it. Like, one guy on here at a 16.4 strikeouts for nine innings. I mean, yeah. he comes in, he's get striking out two guys per inning. All right. My 15, we're going over to Chicago. We're going with Alex Colomb. And then I hope you knew I wasn't going to say Craig Kimbrell. As Craig, Craig Kimball has fallen. What's that face? Craig Kimball has fallen off. Craig Kimball is like, imagine being on like the top of a house and just falling right off. Like, mm-hmm. not even like jumping, just like free falling down. Imagine that. That was Craig Kimball. And it's, it's sad to see. It's actually really no, sad definitely. to see. Alex Colomb had a 1.1 war, 2.8 ERA, a 1.06 whip, and about eight strikeouts per nine innings. So not necessarily a strikeout guy, but somebody who can come in and say, okay, if I need this guy to pitch Mm. an inning for me, he's only going to let one guy on on average, and he's going to get the job done for me. I'm wondering if you had him on your list, actually. but. Nope. Okay. I saw it, and I don't know what it was, but I looked at him, and I was like, nah, I'm sorry. I can't put him in there. (laughs) I don't remember what it was. I wish I, like, looked at it. Now, okay, so my number 14 is Will Smith, and I can't remember what team he plays for, because there have been so many Will Smiths in the MLB. Um, (laughs) I think that... I'm just going to look up quickly. Uh, all right, so 65 and a third innings pitched. Um, 2.76 ERA, 34 saves, 1.2 whip, and 2.2 war. So um, definitely not the best. Um, ERA was pretty low, and saves were pretty low, too. So Or pr- saves were pretty high, I should say. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. How many saves did you say yep. he had? 34. 34, okay. That's, that's definitely yeah. high. Mm-hmm. 
All right. So my 14, it was close to yours. We got Ian Kennedy. Now, it was the same thing yeah. as you were kind of saying, but as if I could find him, his numbers were just all around solid. And I did really like the 10.4 strikeouts for nine innings. He's definitely someone that can come in and you're like, I got this game. You know, if it's a one run lead, you're kind of cutting it close. But if you give him any more mm-hmm. than one run, you know, you're getting out of there with a win. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All 13. Right. Number 13, we have the Mets, Seth Lugo. Um, 80 innings pitched, um, 2.70 ERA, six saves, 0.9 whip, 2.4 war. So this guy's definitely not a closer, but like we said, these are, this is just relief pitchers. So this guy definitely is someone you want in your bullpen, especially since he pitched 80 innings. Like that's a lot of innings being eaten up by a reliever and only having a 2.70 ERA. Like that's really pretty good. And the whip is really low too. Um, so I just had to put him in there. Mm-hmm. I never even thought of him. I did not have him in my list. So, but with that, I looked at like five whip, different lists. I definitely should. Point nine whip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My list, I'm going to be honest, is a little bit thrown together. I did take like two hours on it today, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no worries, bad. man. No worries. Old coaster for me. All right. 13. <laughs> We got Brad Hand from the Indians. So, with him, why are you looking like that? <laughs> I don't have him on my list. Wow. And anytime you give a look like that, it scares me. Because I'm oh, thinking, like I'm like super put... pissed at you or something? <laughs> yes. Like, no, like, no, 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 no. We're him? good. We're good. Or... <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's actually my number one. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, he had a oh, one. Dude. All right, one, anyways, a three point three ERA, one point two three WHIP, thirteen point two strikeouts per nine innings. So definitely more that guy that's either going to, you know, give up a hit or is going to strike somebody out. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's one or the other. There's no really in between with with him based on the numbers, but because of yeah. that one point two strikeout, and he. He's decently low on his walks, too. So, yeah. Give- Definitely. Definitely. All right. All right, so my number 12 is the Yankees' Adam Ottavino. And I didn't like putting him in there because he's a Yankee, but... You have two Yankees 66, in there. I do have two Yankees. I was surprised. I was like, I can't believe... Oh, t- well, also, I, I was re- like... I was like, you can't have, like... Like... To be fair, there's not basically there's very few people in the Red Sox bullpen you want to put in here. Um, <laughs> I have one. I have one. I hope okay, you'll... so I want you to go back to like one of the first episodes we like did, right? And I said I can't stand Ryan Brazier. Roll the clip. Um, <laughs> Sorry, the editing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, Adam Adovino, sixty-six point one third. Innings pitch. 1.90 ERA, two saves, 1.3 whip, 2.3 war. So pretty, um, pretty, pretty elite, especially with the um, the ERA being as low as it is. Um, only two saves. So, you know, but the thing that brought it down for me was the 2.4 war. I was like, you know, mm-hmm. definitely can't put you up higher than that. Yeah. No, for me, like, I, if, you, if I have a cl- relief pitcher that's coming in and is giving me less than a two ERA, I yeah. am ecstatic. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, my number 12. Remember when we had, was it Eric Hosmer that had the negative war? Oh, geez. Right? No, he does not have a negative war. He just has a war of zero. <laughs> <gasps> I know who you're talking about. I have him. <laughs> you have him? Yeah. Yeah, man. I have one higher. One higher. Oh, okay. Going with Kenley Jansen, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I didn't want to put him in because Dodgers, but, you know, his other numbers besides the zero war, uh, a 3.71 ERA was pretty high, but a yeah. 1.06 is very, very solid. 
Yeah, and eleven point four strikeouts per nine innings, and um, has five strikeouts per every walk he throws. Yeah, and you know what? This, like, what really? Because the first thing I saw was the ERA, and I was like, "Whoa, that's like close to four. Like, that's yeah. bad. That's terrible." But also, I looked and I was like, 33 saves. That's a lot of saves." And I was like, "Like, I get it, especially for the fact that, like, you know, he pitched." you know, quite a bit. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Okay. Next up. Next up. My number 11 is Kenley Jansen. So, we're not far off at all. Um, and we literally just talked about him. So, all right. So, yeah. my number 11. We are going over to Philadelphia. Oh, who is this? <laughs> who is this? You speak up from Philly. <laughs> oh, geez, here we go. Oh, oh with the one time Bryce Harper pitched. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Rice Harper right. pitched. Yeah. So I'm guessing you don't have him on your list, and we're going Hector Neris. Mm. What? Uh, something what? about him. I don't know why, because I looked at him. Believe me, I looked at like a list of like 100 relief pitchers, and I was like, yeah, that's a lot. Like, that's really overwhelming. It's like, oh, geez, like 100 of these, you got to pick 15. Um, so, but I don't know. Something about it, I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was the saves that kind of, like, brought him down. Anyways, say stats. 1.8 war, a 2.93 ERA, which is definitely lower than you'd want. Um, a 1.02 whip, which I was a big fan of. That's why he's number 11 for me. And yeah. an 11.8 strikeouts per nine. Throws more walks than you'd want from a relief pitcher, but other than that, those three middle stats that I said are very, very solid. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, like, because that, that bullpen's a little bit weird. Like like you said, he um, doesn't have a ton of saves. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have, like, oh, man, there's one guy in that bullpen, Sir Anthony Dominguez, something weird like that. He's actually pretty good. Um He's a good compliment to Neris. Um, so, yeah. See where mm-hmm. you're coming from. Okay. My number, number 10. 10 is... This guy's had a lot of, a lot of off-the-field issues. The Pirates, Felipe Vasquez. Mm-hmm. Um, 60 innings pitched. 1.65 ERA. 28 saves. 0.9 whip, 2.9 war. So the ERA, the saves, and the whip are like perfect for me. Like yeah. that's that's exactly what you want. Um, I mean, his war is probably low just because the Pirates just aren't that good. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely a lot of off the field issues, um, and probably isn't going to play the, this season, which Wait, is really too bad. What was his name again? Felipe Vasquez. He actually is in MLB the show. Talk him out. About. And if I'm right, if my computer would decide to do something, like, come on. Yeah, he had like some um, like domestic violence, right? Something like that. Oh, I hope it's not. Yep. Um, he was in a relationship with a 13-year-old girl That's in Florida. That's what it was. I was yep. like, right. Right, yeah. right, right, um, yeah. Not yeah, we cool, don't, bro. We don't, we don't mess with Felipe Vasquez, all right? We don't we're mess not, with... We're not into that life, bro. We're not into that life. No, I'm wasn't, sorry. Wasn't he with the Rays, and then he got traded to Pirates? I didn't he was, think he was with the Rays, but... Um, he was with the team in Florida. I know that much, but... Really? He was down um, there, started this relationship, and then... Uh, yeah, we don't... We don't but, mess with Felipe Vasquez, that's but, all we'll say. All right, he's a pretty good, he's a pretty good pitcher. Um, yes, so that's why I thought definitely top that's, 10. I'm not sure how much of a basketball fan you are, but that's just like saying Carl Malone was a basketball player, great basketball player. But <laughs> if you don't know the story of Carl Malone, we'll talk after we end the recording. All right. Google, Google. All right. The rest of you will Google it. Just, yeah. <laughs> we don't mess with Carl Malone. Okay. Number 10 for me. We're going over to Los Angeles. We're going with Hansel Robles. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I didn't have him at all. You didn't? 
Well, no. You know what the funny thing is? The majority of these pitchers are actually National League. Now that I'm looking at it. For me. You're right, actually. For me, at least. I don't know about your list, but like, I'm one, two, uh, three, four, five out of my top ten. Right? That's half. Stupid. No, but I'm, I'm just double-checking. One, two, three, four. Oh, uh, wait, no. N- five, uh, yeah, anyways, go ahead. Who do you have for who do you have for what it's called now? <laughs> okay. Hansel Robles. Okay, a cool. 2.6 war, a 2.48 ERA. A, where is it? Where is it? I just lost it. A 1.01 whip and 9.3 strikeouts per game. So he's going to come in. He's going to give up. On average, he's going to give up one hit. He's going to strike out a guy, and he's only going to let let a run up every three innings. So, wow, that's yeah, good. Definitely top ten worthy, in my opinion. Definitely, definitely. This next guy that I have after you say yours, you're probably not going to have, and you're going to look at me like I have three heads sprouting out. But I will okay. explain myself. I'm preparing myself for that one. Um, Kevin Pillar. What if we just made an entire baseball team just out of Kevin Pillar? <laughs> Honestly, do it on MLB this show. I will. Gosh, no, I will. All I right. Think it's the meme team of, <laughs> of the Best People podcast. All right. Yes. Every every outfield position or every um, fielding position, Catcher, is nothing everything. but Kevin Pillar, and every pitching position is nothing but Eduardo Rodriguez. No, it shouldn't be Rodriguez. It should be like Brazier. Somebody like terrible like that. No, we need to put somebody terrible that you actually put in the list. Okay, um, I'll look back because I have some bad ones. Trust me. All right, <laughs> my number nine is the Padres. Emilio Pagan. I didn't have him. Really? I did not. See, relief pitchers were hard. Because there are a lot of them, so that's fair. Of yeah. relief pitchers, you know, yeah. because starting pitchers were a little easier because there's only five per team. Yeah, relief yeah. pitchers are hard because there's anywhere from like six to ten per team. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we have a lot yeah. of very differences until we get to like top five. Then we should have the same like same few guys, but hopefully, yeah. Um, all right, so Pagan stats. 70 innings pitch, 2.31 ERA, 20 saves, 0.83 whip, 2.9 war. So this guy is someone who um, he came from the Rays, I believe, right? I think. Um, yeah, which I didn't know about. Um, but 20 saves, not bad. 70 innings pitched. Like he's taking. He reminds me a lot of Lugo. Um, pitch ten innings less, but I mean, point eight three whip, pretty good. So I had to throw him in there. No, he's with the Padres now, and from what yeah. I'm seeing, he started in Seattle, then the next year went to Oakland, and then last year was with the Rays. So this is his fourth team in four years. How old is he then? He's like really young. He is twenty nine. Okay, all right. Thought he was younger. But still, four teams. But still, fourth teams in like, yeah, okay. crazy. Okay, number nine for me, and I guarantee you don't have him on your list. Nick Anderson. I thought about putting him in my list, and I didn't. Even so, though, prove me wrong. <laughs> even though he is a division rival, I had to give respect because you know with our pitchers, I value strikeouts. Yeah. Right, the more you can go and strike out people, the less pressure you put on that defense, and the less likely there is for errors. Mm. So, with Nick Anderson, a 1.4 WAR, a 3.32 ERA, a 1.07 WHIP, which is definitely solid, and mm. then a 15.2 strikeouts per nine innings. 15. Whoa, that's average for him, and he gives up. And he has six strikeouts per every walk he throws. So he's Whoa. walks too. That's crazy. Dang. Wow. Yeah, I should have put him in there. Second highest 
behind somebody who's in my top five. I'll say that much. All right. All right. Number eight. The guy, please. Huh? I have a bad feeling you put my number eight higher, and I don't want you to. Um, the twins, Taylor Rogers. So, Taylor Rogers, um, like I said, 79 innings. It's not 79, 69. I can't see. Jeez. 69 innings pitched. Um, two, uh, 261 ERA, 30 saves, 0.1 whip, 2.5 war. So, okay. this guy, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, definitely not top five. Um, but the thing that kind of like surprised me was, um, like, I was surprised how low his war is. Like, and I get that the, that the Twins' bullpen isn't, like, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But, like, from a closer, I guess I wouldn't want to have 2.5 war. Um, yeah. But the 30 saves brought it up to, you know, top 10 for me. Um, and 69 innings pitch. So. If, if you're talking, this is a good segue into mine, number eight. If you're talking about having your closing pitcher not have a high war. First of all, Craig Kimbrell with a negative 0.5. Shout out to Craig Kimbrell. Best beard in the world. Worst pitcher in the league. (laughs) Second off, the Yankees closer has a worse war than Taylor Rogers. We're going with Chapman for my number eight. Now, two years ago or three years ago, if you would have, if we would have done this, He's what top three? Yeah, probably. if if top. not number one, you know, if not number one, yeah, yeah. But he's just kind of taking a fall. So Definitely. a two point two one ERA, a one point one a WHIP, and thirteen point four strikeouts per nine innings. So yeah, and he has a little too high of walks, but for what he's giving you, strikeouts are definitely still there. WHIP is decent. ERA is decent. He's just not decent. You know, he's not terrible. He's not a top five guy anymore. Mm -hmm. And I hate him just because he's a Yankee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That was just weird. That was really weird. Like, he went to the Cubs just to win a ring. And then he immediately signed back. I was like, dude, what the heck? (laughs) Yankees traded him to the Cubs. He went, he won his ring, and then he got his sorry ass back to the Yankees. It was bad. It was bad. Um, so I totally get that. I totally get um, his war is terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, my number seven, and I had to put him in there, is the Red Sox, Brandon Workman. God damn it. You put Chapman over Workman? Yes, and I'll explain why. Um, I'll, I'll let so, you. So Brandon Workman had a really weird year last year, right? So the beginning of the year, we started out with having this committee of closer, which was terrible. You never should do that ever again. Or a, uh, no, terrible, we're, terrible. We'd we'll sit here for forty minutes talking about Gore. Just but, <laughs> but so, but okay. So seventy one point two thirds innings pitched. That's a lot of a lot of innings. We overuse the crap out of him. One point eighty eight ERA. Now the saves are low because he was converted to a closer halfway through the year. Right. So yep. like if he started as a closer at the beginning of the year, we probably would see like the thirties at least. Um one point one whip, three point two war. So yeah. And this guy's been he like uh, I mean, he's really similar to Kennedy. He's been a uh, starting pitcher, relief pitcher, now he's a closer. Um and he's I wouldn't be I have no complaints about him at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, for me, number seven, I went to the Astros. You oh, don't have on your what list. What the heck? What you the heck, have, Bobby? You don't Jeez. have on the list. <sighs> don't. Wow. I don't, I don't like that look. Did you no. have him higher, or did you not have him at all? No, he's higher. He's he's I like. Couldn't. I couldn't. He is not, based on what they did last year, he is not better than Taylor Rogers. Say that now. Okay? A 1.8 war, 2.63 ERA, 
Now I know you had him higher because of his whip, correct? No. Because of his saves? Yeah. Okay. He had like eight more saves. But the whip is still like phenomenal. 0.877, which is phenomenal. 10 mm-hmm. strikeouts a game and six strikeouts per walk, which is very, very good. Yeah. And on my next one, I will explain why Taylor Rogers, who is my six, is better than that. I would say Ozuna is better than Rogers because he has a high, uh, excuse me, a lower whip, more saves, and more innings pitched. Right? No, less innings pitched. Never mind. So two things. All right. Well, yeah. Um. Yeah. All all Ozuna has on him is he has a better whip, and was that the only thing for me? He has eight more saves, but other than that. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that whip though. Was... All right. Who's your number six? My number six is the man himself, the man who punched himself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can get to that after I drink water. The good old Toronto Blue Jays closer and former. Astros closer Ken Giles. Oh, the God. guy looks like a rat. No, Let's just say mean. that. Oh. I I couldn't stop laughing about how he punched himself in the face after he gave up that home run. Anyway, Yankees hit him. Ken Giles hard. Ken Giles hit Ken Giles hard. <laughs> Roll the clip. <laughs> oh. oh gosh. Okay. So, anyways, Ken Giles, fifty-three innings pitched. Yeah, kind of low. Um, 1.87 ERA, not bad. 23 saves, kind of low. 1.1 whip, or sorry, 1.0 whip. 2.5 WAR. Um, yeah, I just mostly put him up there because of the ERA and the fact that he punched himself in the face, which was hilarious. Yeah. Okay. I had him a little bit higher, but nothing crazy. Number six. I don't like that side eye. My eyes like freaking out, man. Like I don't know what the deal is with pollen. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Same down here. God. But anyway, so- six, we're going Taylor Rogers, like I said. The reason I have him over Azuna is because he has better war, slight very, very slightly better ERA. Mm-hmm. The whip he still has a one point zero flat, which is still very, very good. Eleven point seven strikeouts per nine innings, which is better than Azuna, and mm-hmm. gives up less. Yeah. So, you know, I, I had to give it to him. Definitely. But, yeah. And I didn't look at those other stats. You know, if I did, I, I probably should have looked at more stats in this um, in this top 15 thing. I kind of just based off of like who I thought personally coming from um, just like personal preference, but then also from some stats. Hey, um, really, you're using stats, though. If you don't yeah. remember episode one of this, you decided. Let's just let's just let's just see who I like. Let's just yeah, let's just see who I like. If if I like them and if I'm not mistaken, you threw that list together in the Oh, that was like recording. Yeah, that was like uh we'll 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 do this and uh okay, fine. Good. Cool. And it it happened to be sad. like one of the funniest episodes we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Right. Like Top 5. Top 5. Top 5. The Athletics, Liam Hendricks. 85 innings pitched. Um, 1.80 ERA. 25 saves, which was actually like pretty low for me. Mm-hmm. Um, 1 point, sorry, uh, 0.97 whip. 3.5 war. So the war's pretty high. Yeah. Um, probably one of the highest wars in my list. But, I mean, yeah. Still pretty good. Like eighty five innings. That's that's a ton of innings. Yes. Um so yeah. All right. Number five for me is Brandon Workman. And the reason is because every stat on here is amazing, besides one, which I'll get to. Mm-hmm. But a three point two war, mm. very high for relief pitcher and yeah. slash closer. Um a one point eight eight ERA, one point oh three whip, thirteen point mm-hmm. Strikeouts per nine innings, but he gives up a lot of walks, which you and I know far too well. Yeah, 
he he has he but has I think he's also done that over his entire career. Yes. You know, this isn't like a one six you know. walk nine innings, which is yeah. astronomically higher than anyone else. Oh so you the only other guy that has that low, and it's not even that low, is Alex Colom, who was my fifteen. Okay. Yeah. I, that was the only guy that had anywhere close to that. Mm-hmm. That's the only complaint I have. Everything else, I can't wait for him to be the permanent closer of this team. Me neither. And I really like the fact that you have Matt Barnes coming in also as an option. He's definitely not someone you want to turn to every single time to be you know, closing out games. But He's my number two on my list. I'm kidding. <laughs> my number four is that Aroldis is Chapman. <laughs> Which, and my, my number four is Chapman. Um, Ooh, 37 saves. 37 saves. That's the thing that brought it up for me. Like, that's, that's a ton of saves. Uh, but you're right. The war is crap. Um, the whip is pretty low. Um, but he only pitched 57 innings. So, and you're right. He's kind of definitely fallen off a little bit. But the guy still throws gas. Yes. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Okay. Number four for me. We already talked about him a bit. We have Ken Giles. Now, why did you put him so high? <laughs> because he was better than he's much better than Azuna. If your number four is or your number three is Azuna, which I'm assuming it is, yeah, it because is. our top two better be. I'm not going to say with we have the same two people in our top two. I'm not yes, going to say the definitely. place, but he's definitely better than Azuna, and you can't even dispute that. Yeah, but the only thing, once again, the only thing Azuna has him in. Is whip, yeah. Besides, I don't yeah. know about saves. I can't. I can't say that. But Ken Giles definitely hits hard. We've seen that before. But we already talked about him, so let's go on to number three. Number three is Ozuna. So yeah. the thing that I why I put him number three was he had um, the second highest number of saves in the MLB with thirty eight saves. Um, but you know, you're right. His war is just crap. But also at the same time, like he's also playing for the Astros, so you know you're gonna get a ton of saves. You know if you're gonna be getting that type of production from your offense. So yeah. So who do you have for number three then? Number three is Hendricks. Okay. Which gotcha. It's it's just that these top two guys put themselves such on a higher pedestal than everyone else. For mm-hmm. me, I don't know about you. But for me, it literally went one and two on this pedestal. Yeah. Uh, three through seven or eight on this pedestal, and then the rest down here. Like. Yeah, definitely. It's, okay. So, I don't think we have the same number one because I think. I don't think we do, because honestly, I changed my number one and number two, like probably seven different times. I know. I thought about this so it much. Was- it was crazy, both man. Are insane pitchers. Both oh, definitely, definitely. Insane. And these can be interchangeable depending on who you talk to. Who is yes. your number one? My number one. Yes. My number one is Kirby Yates. Oh, we actually agreed. Yes. Um. I, what I thought, I honestly thought you'd go hate hater just because I of- had hater so many different times. I was like, dude. Um. But anyways, my number two well, why, is Josh I, Hader. I put number one. Why'd you put Yates number one? I put Yates at number one because he had a lower ERA with 1.19 ERA. Like, that's really that's pretty freaking low. Insane. That's yeah. the reason I did. And especially playing for a team like the Padres. Like, you got to deal with Machado's attitude dang, on the back. Dang. 41 saves. The highest number of saves in the entire MLB. 0.9 whip. So his whip's a little bit high. Or like, slightly higher than um, haters. But Ooh. in his war is three. A flat three. So I had to put him in there. I also, the thing that brought me going back and forth between them was Hader pitched 75 and two thirds innings, where Yates only pitched 60.2 thirds. So I was like, you can't really determine, you can't really blame them for that because it's not the game. You know what I mean? Definitely. But I also was thinking, like, if, if Yates, and what I eventually came down to, like, if Yates kept up these stats, with seventy five and two thirds innings pitch, he probably was still would be number one. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta still stick him up there. Mm-hmm. But 
I basically said Kirby stats. You want to say haters? Yeah. Cool. All right. So a 2.6 war, a 2.62 ERA, which is definitely just above. It's above average. The yeah. .80 whip. That's what killed me, and that's what made me want to think we're going to throw a hater, possibly number one, but I couldn't. 16.4 mm-hmm. strikeouts per nine innings. 16. Yeah. Crazy. And Crazy, seven bro. strikeouts. Oh, it's can't. insane. He's an insane pitcher. And the funny thing is, for the longest time, they never, like the, the Brewers never had him as their closer. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck? If this guy's throwing up numbers like this, stick him in the closer position. You know, like I get they had someone else. They had like Corey Kniebel, I think, um, who was probably more, definitely was more experienced in closing games. But I just was like, dude, that's still like, you can't waste. It's not like you were wasting talent, but like, dude, he could have like done so much better in his career, I think. I mean, and his career has been phenomenal, but yeah. Yeah. All right. So that is the finale there. I Round really, of applause, everybody. We've, we've, we've come up with a lot of memes, a lot of memories that will yes. go you know, for a long time. Yes. And this is probably the best idea you've had for this channel. Which I... I, I, I like, what else I are we going to do in quarantine? It took, it, took like. a lot of, it took a lot of time researching for me. It took a lot of time editing. Mm. But it was so much fun. Yeah, definitely. So, Ari's takes... Ari's takes. Let's go. So this week we're going to talk about um, the, uh, you know, I'm on Instagram. I'm just scrolling and I see Major League Baseball posts the quote by Bartolo Colon. And he says, if any Major League team wants an old man, I'm available. I saw that. Mm -hmm. And I laughed about it. And I was like, ha ha ha. Okay, funny. Cool. Whatever. And then I thought to myself, I was like, wait a second, bro. Like, what if? The Red Sox got Bartolo Colon. Bartolo Colon in the Red Sox uniform part yes, two. Part two. I don't remember. I was trying to like look up the stats. I think it was, he, um, was, was it 11? Was first. But this is what his contract was with the Rangers last year, right? One year, seven, uh, one, $1,750,000. Really pretty low. Yes. So my take, I think. I mean, it would be good for the memes. It would be hilarious just to see him in, like, part two with the Red Sox organization. But I also think he might actually be, like, he could potentially be good. He could something. potentially be that fifth starter. Yeah. Or that we do not have currently. Have bench. Yeah. But this, this dude has played for so many teams. Big sex he, rocks. He played for Cleveland. Then he played for who is this? Uh, Montreal. Then he played for the White Sox. Then he played for the Angels. Yeah. Uh, then he played for Boston in 08. He was 08. 30, okay. He was 35 years old when he played for Boston in 30 Jeez. in 08. Uh, then he played for the White Sox. Then the Mets. Then the Athletics. That the Mets again. No, sorry, Yankees. Then Athletics. Then Mets. Then Atlanta. Then Minnesota. Then Texas. Yeah. That's crazy. And I it's crazy. Think he could come back and be somebody who's great. Not great, but somebody who can really contribute to the team. And honestly, the- we don't have a fifth starter. It's like, throw him in there. What's the worst that could happen? And like, if we're not having sale this year, like we got to have another like veteran presence in the clubhouse, especially mm-hmm. for that pitching staff. So that's what I think. I think the Red Sox should sign uh, Bartolo Colon. That's my take honestly, this week. If, if for nothing else, do it for the memes. Yes. Always yes. do it. You can guarantee. I'm just going to like barrage. Barrage. If like the Red Sox sign Cologne, I'm just going to like throw out a ton of pictures and like stuff. And be like, we love this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, he's been in the MLB longer than we've been alive. Yeah. Fair. Think about that. Fair. I am 21. You're 20, right? You already had your plus, birthday? Plus, plus, plus. Oh. When's your birthday again? August 28th. See, known this dude ever since we were eight and nine years old, and I still don't know his birthday. <laughs> I don't know your birthday, so if that makes you feel any better. Okay, good. But all right. And I refuse to tell you. But he's been he's been in the league since ninety seven. Yeah. 
No, he's crazy, man. And he was an all star. What is this? What is this award? Tell me. It won't tell me what that is. He even won an MVP? Uh, what? <laughs> okay, we need to sign him now. Who will not sign? Like, we're, we're going to write a petition and we're going to. I think we should do it. I think we should really, really sign this guy. This guy should be. Um, Where? Should be our fourth or fifth starter. On. He was in the M- MVP race, but I don't see. Oh, he was. Okay, okay. He did not. Why did it tell me he won an MVP? He was top 15 in AL MVP voting for one year. Huh. Which, Interesting. Why, why tell me that? It's just an MVP next to it, and I'm like, you're joking. Oh, man. That was the year A-Rod won it, and Ortiz came in second. But we should wrap uh, it up. We're just, we're just rambling now. Any other last A-Rod. words you want to say? That's it. No, uh, I think we're good. I'm ready to go to work in 90 minutes and work from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Life is great. Anybody watching, don't do night shifts. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate every single one of you. God bless. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys.